Good evening, everyone. Today is Monday, February 1st. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to our official uh, City Council meeting. Uh, leading off on the agenda is our invocation by Father Tony Teixeira from Pastor Mary Queen of Heaven. Father Tony, if you'd please uh, lead us in the invocation today. Thank you. You can grab the mic. Uh, actually, yeah, the, either I don't know if that one is on, but if not, the one off to the side there uh, might work stand. as well, too. I, I, Father Tony, would you like us to stand? Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm told that uh, what I'm about to do is a, a little controversial. Um, I was reminded of an old Peanuts cartoon right after a uh, Supreme Court decision where Lucy grabs Charlie Brown in the parlor and she drags him down the stairs into the cellar, into a back room, locks the back room, puts him in a corner, looks at him right in the eye and says, shh. We prayed in school today. Thank you, Father Tony. And now if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And to make this meeting official, I'd ask uh, Clerk Patty Spencer to call the roll, please. Gutenkopf. Here. Peza. Here. Shea. Here. Leader. Here. Rose. Absent. Bram. Absent. Hipskin. Here. York. Here. Nibo. Here. Healy. Here. Morley. Here. Kennedy. Absent. Mulliner. Absent. Wagner. Here. Ten present, four absent. Ten present, four absent. We have an we have an official quorum. And uh, next on the on the agenda is a um, proclamation for scouting. Is there anyone here from the scouts that uh, would like to accept this pro proclamation on behalf of the scouts by chance? I see Susan May. Uh, maybe uh, want to have. I'll, I'll meet you up at the podium if you'd like. <laughs> <Jonathan? laughs> yeah. If uh, if you'd like, he's a scout, correct? Yes. Beautiful. Want to have Jonathan meet me up at the uh, podium? <laughs> you just. I'm putting Jonathan on the spot because we were looking for a scout, and I, I know he's a scout because he's been to my office and he's actually come in uniform and taking pictures and he's a good young man. So um, this is a proclamation on behalf of the city council. Uh, I'm going to read this real quick. Whereas the Boy Scouts of America has been at the forefront of, inst of instilling timeless values in youth since the founding in 1910, and whereas this national youth movement has made serving others through its uh, values-based program, its mission, whereas the Boy Scouts of America is committed to helping millions of youth succeed by providing the support friendship, mentoring, necessary to live a happy and fulfilling life. And whereas the Three Fires Council of, of the Boy Scouts of America and its 637 Club Scout PACs 
Boy Scout troops and venturing crews are celebrating scouting's 100th year anniversary with the theme celebrating the adventure, continuing the journey. And whereas there are more than 454 community organizations that make up scouting to the 36,644 youth members in our area, providing a means of character building, citizenship training, and personal fitness. And now therefore I, Peter, PDC, and you the third mayor of the city of Elmers do hereby proclaim February 7th through February 13th, 2010 as Scouting Anniversary Week in the city of Elmers and express appreciation to our citizens for their interest and dedication to America's youth. Thank you. Very good, Jonathan, you get a presentation. Thanks, Jonathan. Item six on the agenda, written um, communications and petitions from the public. At this time, are there any written uh, communications and or petitions? If there are, if you could please stand up now and present those to our clerk, Patty Spencer, who is up here to my right. That would be great. Anybody with any written communications or petitions? All righty, seeing none, I will now go to the public forum section of our meeting where anyone uh, from Elmhurst has uh, up to three minutes to speak about anything uh, regarding Elmhurst business. Um, I'd ask as I call on you, if you would please uh, raise your hand and uh, go up to the mic either to my right or to my left and uh, please state your name and address and then you have three minutes. Anybody would like to speak for a public forum here? Mrs. Krantz? I'm Laura Krotz, 292 Forest Avenue and I'm here to speak on behalf of the Le Elmhurst League of Women Voters. I'm here to speak reluctantly tonight because I know that the uh, mayor and city council have good intentions. My concern and the league's concern is that good intentions are not always seen the same way from both sides of the, the dais. As many of you know, the Elmhurst League of Women Voters believes that the city of Elmhurst should not open its city council meetings with public prayer or invocation. Incorporating prayer into the city meetings can create an unnecessary barrier between the city of Elmhurst and its residents. To some people, this will be very subtle. Some individuals will feel uncomfortable and reluctant to address city officials publicly, even though they have the right to do so. To others, a formal prayer will be taken as an overt message that they are not people like us. An open atmosphere is most important at the local level, the city level, where many people have their first and most frequent direct government contact. Therefore, city <laughs> officials are compelled to take the greatest care in ensuring that everyone in the community feels welcome and that they know they will be listened to as equals. Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council, your rights to individual religious freedom are not in question here. If you chose to, you could very well meet your spiritual needs in a session before the council meeting, and we would not object to that. The League of Women Voters has been very proud that city officials, both elected and staff members, have worked very hard to create an environment where all residents could approach them as equal partners. We sincerely hope that you will maintain these high standards of good democratic government. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Krantz. Anybody else? Uh, Ms. Heslop. My name is Darlene Heslop and I live at 200 North Michigan Avenue, number 227 in Elmhurst. Mayor DeCiani has stated several things that indicate to me that he still doesn't get it. We're playing the hand, the hand ain't bad, and that's a quote. Trader Joe's and Whole Foods are not coming to Elmhurst and have made that perfectly clear. It would be financial cannibalism as for either entity to place a location here would merely draw business away from existing stores, putting them in jeopardy. This has been well known for over a year. The mayor keeps stating that he is a businessman who convened a task force to advise him on financial matters. Well, maybe they could remind him that when a company says no several times to the point of requesting that phone calls, emails, and any other correspondences cease, that it's time to move on lest we lose our credibility. I don't understand how he could state that we are in good shape financially when we are losing money right and left. Revenues are not keeping up with expenditures to the point that the working cash fund is zero and for the next fiscal year approximately $750,000 will need to be transferred from the capital fund to support the operating fund. We are essentially robbing Peter to pay Paul. 
I drive a 1994 Toyota Camry that has 129,000 miles on it. Until the wheels fall off or the engine blows, I won't be purchasing another automobile. Sorry, but I and others in similar circumstances won't be able to, quote, ring the bell for these guys, end quote, as the mayor has stated. This is not the answer to our problems. A 1.5 cent per gallon gasoline tax is being proposed. However, I am skeptical as to how much it would actually bring in, and the possibility of driving business out of Elmhurst is far more likely. When a known authority, in this case the Elmhurst League of Women Voters, points out where our mayor is overstepping his boundaries, he continues to insist that he is right and of course they are wrong. The mayor stated that the U.S. Constitution protects freedom of religion and he made it seem as if he believes that the very same document does not protect the right of freedom from religion. However, he is incorrect. Our rights are protected are just as protected from choosing no religion at all, including non-belief in a supreme being, the non-belief in prayer of any kind, and the non-participation or belief in any and all other traditions, rites, etc., which could reasonably be concluded to be religious or spiritual in nature. We are indeed just as protected from having no religion as we are from choosing to believe in Judaism, Muslimism, Buddhism, or Christianity. The Citizen Advocacy Center also recently corrected the mayor on his politicizing in favor of certain candidates and not mentioning others. How many of us have seen the TV commercial for Mr. Ryan and the prominence in the last portion in which our very own mayor is seen walking out of City Hall with Mr. Ryan? For someone that ran on being completely independent and who is supposed to represent all the citizens, this looks a lot like an endorsement of a certain selected Republican. It's time for the mayor to start getting it before the only people that benefit in this town are the ones that are just like him, in their mid-40s, male, driving cars worth more than what I make in a year, living in million-dollar homes, and believe that we are not protected from religion, only in choosing one. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Heslop. Anyone else for public forum? Um, My name is Lena Benson, and I live at 391 River Glen here in Elmhurst. First off, I'd like to make sure that I make very clear that I have absolutely nothing against religion. I'm a Sunday school teacher going on my fifth year. I'm serving on the board on the third year now, and I was the youth group leader for four years. I attend services regularly, and last year I took a Bible class at Elmhurst College. I love talking about religion, and I think I can learn a lot from it, and as can everyone else. However, I do not think that religion has any place at city council meetings. If we're going down that path, which religions are we going to observe? What, God, who got, what gods are we going to pray to? How much time do we set aside for the prayer? For what purpose are we doing this? Will it be first come, first serve when it comes to bringing in your priest, reverend, rabbi, imam, or whoever it may be? I believe that faith is a very personal matter. I believe in one God, but I'm not as, no, as not so naive as to think that everyone agrees with me on that. I think that it's a very divisive thing to do to bring this in. I believe that everyone here can pray before the meeting any which way they choose to any God they worship. I do not think it's a good idea to do this at the actual meeting. How do we know who lives here in Elmhurst and who they worship? When I moved here 15 plus years ago, no one asked me to declare what faith I was. How, do, how and who decides which faith can come and pray? Are we letting ourselves open to any faith? Is that Christians, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Wiccans, Baha'i faiths, Zoroastrians, Mormons, on and on and on? And what about agnostics and atheists? I think we're, if we're going down a slippery slope here. And we have done just fine without prayers before, and I think we can do that. If someone feels the need to pray before a meeting, that's fine with me. I feel everyone should f be free to pray any way they want, in private. I don't know, I don't like how this has happened, how it just came, and this is how it is. I believe there should be some discussion about it, and before it's before it just single-handedly said, yeah, we're gonna do this, no matter what anyone else thinks. I urge the mayor, with the guidance of council, to please rethink this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Benson. Anyone else? Gentleman there with the brown sweat sport coat. Mark Heisler, I live at 135 South York Road, number 518 in Elmhurst. Mayor DeCiani, you were elected to do the work of the city of Elmhurst, not God's work. Prayer has no place in our city council meetings. The city of Elmhurst mission statement is as follows. The city of Elmhurst is committed to providing responsive and superior governmental services in an environment of respect to protect and enhance the quality of life of those who live, work, visit, and conduct business in our community. 
Your plan to begin each council meeting with a sectarian prayer is offensive and in no way creates more responsive or superior governmental service. It does nothing to create an environment of respect nor to enhance the quality of our lives. Your job is to manage the affairs of the city. This is what you were elected to do, nothing more and nothing less. Elmhurst is a very spiritual community and that is one of the more appealing aspects of living here. However, there are many outlets for spirituality in Elmhurst that are not publicly sanctioned or endorsed, and that is as it should be. By adding prayer to the City Council agenda, you expose the city and yourself to distracting lawsuits which will require the attention of yourself and other city leaders. How much taxpayer-funded time has the city attorney already spent in preparing a defense of your actions? Whatever it is, it is money ill-spent. On behalf of the other hardworking taxpayers of this city, I respectfully request that you reimburse the city for all tax dollars spent on this non-essential issue. Your city council doesn't support the notion of prayer before meetings. A vast, silent majority of Elmhurst residents also don't support this notion. Go back to doing the work the people of Elmhurst elected you to this position to do and cease and desist from pursuing this issue any further. You were not elected to do God's work. You were elected to do the people's work. Now get focused and get busy. There is much to be done. Thank you, sir. Mr. Benson. Todd Benson, 391 River Glen, here in our, our town of Elmhurst. Good evening to all of you, Mr. Mayor, and to the council. I would start off, and I'm almost fearful to say God Almighty. And that's a shame. And that's not good. It's also, good evening to Father Tashetta. it's unfortunate to have to listen to such a wise man have to couch his words and not be able to speak as he might speak on a Sunday or might speak when he meets uh, uh, an Elmhurst resident or a community member or one of his parishioners. We live in a society that is fearful that has to be proactive in terms of protecting all rights. And I'm just, again, nervous that my city might walk down a path that could take time away from important subjects, attention away from deciding how to fill up the industrial park, which might be half empty this evening, to find out how to move the Han Street project along. As I've heard our mayor say, it shouldn't be sitting fallow, and it is. I'm not here to throw any darts or jabs at who's right or who's wrong, but I applaud the city council for taking this very sensitive issue to committee under the direction of the mayor with his encouragement, with each of you deciding what would be the best way. Yes, there's precedence at the Congress at DuPage uh, County Board for some kind of invocation, but again, how do we best administer this here in this town? Should we be going down to this road? How do you involve, there are 31 churches in Elmhurst. There are many people who believe in religion who don't attend a sanctuary here in our community, who attend outside of our town. What are the rules, what are the ways to go here? And again, I would just, offer that support to you to think six ways to Sunday, so to speak, before making this decision. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Benson. Anyone else for public forum? <coughs> Mr. Reddick, County Board Commissioner from District 2. Good evening. My name is Jeff Reddick. I live at 851 Princeton Court here in Elmhurst. I'm here this evening. Uh, because I had the opportunity to read in the local paper an account related to item number 70, the issue of the invocation at the start of the meeting. And, and I was appalled at some of the information that I read in there. And I'm really concerned that as this city council goes forward and addresses this issue, that they may somehow be compelled to act on some misinformation. You all received a copy of a letter dated January 26, 2010 from a representative of the League of Women Voters who is here this evening. In that letter it states, and I quote, this proposal, referencing the proposal to include an invocation at the start of this meeting, amounts to an unconstitutional endorsement of religion. 
If you take nothing else away from this discussion, please remember this. That is absolutely not true. There is no basis for that statement in law. There's no basis for that statement in history. And there is certainly no basis for that statement in the Constitution of the United States in the First Amendment. Now, it is my hope that that was simply a misstatement, that this isn't part of a bigger political issue to disseminate disinformation to further that political agenda. But regardless, please understand that this is constitutional, the proposal that's been put forward. This isn't a novel thing. This isn't part of some radical religious agenda. There are 16 communities in the suburban, 16 suburban municipal, municipal communities that use or utilize an invocation. The DuPage County Board, as was previously mentioned, uses an invocation. The Illinois State House of Representatives has an invocation. The Illinois State Senate, the U.S. Congress, and the U.S. Senate. I assure you that what they are doing is not unconstitutional. What you do, if going forward under the plan, as it was proposed and set forward by the mayor and reported in the paper, there's no fear of litigation. You're simply allowing us to go forward with the relig religious freedoms that are protected by the First Amendment. Please understand that the First Amendment was not intended to protect government from religion. It was to protect religion from government. At no point did the Founding Fathers ever intend to take moral influence or divine guidance away from the legislative process. I would tell you that based on the amount of distrust that people have of government at all levels, top to bottom right now, that it's not that we need less moral guidance, we probably need more. Turning away from a higher power is not the way to achieve that. There are some people, as part of this discussion, that would believe that we need to be purely secular in the activities that go on in this city council. To those people, I would simply say, please take a look at this. The idea of coming forward, and as you start a meeting, stepping back, taking a deep breath, asking for guidance, wisdoms, and patience as you go forward doing the work of the people of the city of Elmhurst, I believe will provide a secular benefit to the people. On a little bit of a lighter note as I, I finish up, and as I do encourage you to take this and thoroughly vet this, but don't give in to any misinformation that may have been put out there. Do the research yourself. I will say that I've had an opportunity to monitor and pay attention to the budget discussions and the tax levy discussions that you've had, and I think that now probably more than ever might be a good time to uh, seek some divine intervention. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Commissioner Reddick. Appreciate it. Anybody else for public forum at this time? Anybody? All righty. I will officially close the public forum portion of our meeting. And before I go on to the consent agenda, I just wanted to talk about the prayer issue and how I, a little history on prayer in Elmhurst. Ironically, Mayor Abner Gannett, uh, who was a mayor here in the 70s and 80s, ironically of Jewish descent, uh, instituted prayer. He didn't legislate it. He thought it was a good thing to do to bring the council together. Um, Mayor Hartwig from Madison, uh, who, who handed off from Mayor Rosado uh, the institution of prayer, again, put in by the leader and supported by his council. Um, again, totally constitutional, takes place. Actually, they're in a meeting right now, and, and they prayed tonight as well, too. The only, con the only Congress, or excuse me, House of Representatives, the only Senate, I know Senator Milner actually wrote a quote, which we'll probably read at a later meeting. He was a former police chief, uh, chief, chief of police here in Elmhurst, and now he's an Illinois State Senator endorsing prayer, which they do every day as they are in session. I did not do this to make anybody mad. Um, I did this to give us guidance, give us inspiration. We've had a lot of tough decisions up here to make, and I think in good faith uh, this will hopefully uh, give us some guidance and, and, and bring us together. So. Um, but again, this is something that has historically been done in Elmhurst. Mayors after that had stopped doing that, not because they were sued, not because 
of any reason. It's just a matter, matter of preference of the leader. So um, I'm a very spiritual person. I'm open, opening this up to every denomination in our community. And if there are other denominations, whether it's Jewish or any other place of worship, they are welcome to bring in uh, their their leaders to uh, to uh, to get on our schedule, and, and they'll follow the guidelines which we have set. And and I am also opening open to putting this through committee to have it vetted and, and have the process uh, looked at. So, but but we will follow the federal guideline to make sure that all our our T's are crossed and I's are dotted. But it's well intended in good faith, a non-denominational prayer for spiritual guidance. So again, done in Elmers for many years, and looking to be reinstituted by myself and I'm hoping that the council will embrace this and, and look at this as a positive. So with that said, I go on to item number eight and I thank Father Tony for coming out and doing a great job on our first prayer. Thank you, Father Tony. Um, I'd ask uh, uh, if there are any, any concerns or questions or possibly somebody that might want to vote no on any item on our consent agenda, if you would be good enough to let me know on that issue or on the item. Uh, Alderman Mulliner. Item E. Item E. And uh, Alderman Gutenkopf? Item Y. Item Y. All right. Anybody else? Alderman Brown. Item H. Item H. Anybody else? We're okay. Okay. I ask for a motion and a second to approve the uh, contents of the consent agenda. Less items E, H, and Y. Alderman Morley first, Alderman Pezza seconds. I ask Clerk Spencer please to call the roll. Morley. Aye. Pezza. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Bram. Aye. Kipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kennedy. Absent. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. That motion carries. Uh, now on to item E. Uh, that is a referral. I'd ask Clerk Spencer to read the referral, please. To Mayor DeCiani and members of the City Council. Change in regular council agenda to include public prayer. Alderman Rose, Mulliner, Bram, Leader, Gutenkopf, Shea, and Pezza. It is re respectfully requested that the attached request from Alderman Rose, Mulliner, Bram, Leader, Gutenkopf, Shea, and Pezza be referred to the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee for their review, evaluation, and subsequent recommendation to the City Council. Respectfully submitted, Thomas P. Borchard, City Manager. All righty, and at this time I ask for a motion and a second, please, to put this on the floor. And being that this is a um, referral, there will be limited discussion on this particular item. Alderman Mulliner and Alderman Gutenkopf, and uh, again, a referral, so discussion, but but again, we, we're not going to be debating this uh, at this time. This will go into committee and Point we'll debate it. Yes. Uh, do we do a motion on a referral, a yeah. committee referral? Uh, defer to City Attorney Storino. Yes. Okay. Alderman Mulliner. Uh, mine is not to debate this issue. My, mine is to bring forth the, the point that what I'm concerned about is the fact that this issue was brought up at the last city council meeting that there was an interest in doing this by the mayor and that the an immediate response came from seven aldermen requesting that this be referred to a committee and then at the next city council meeting there's immediately already an invocation added to the agenda. When we've been spending the last, in our committee, the last three months going through chapter two which defines the agenda and the activities of what's going on at the city council and that would have been a perfect opportunity to have brought this up in fact that item is actually on the agenda this evening and it would have been nice to have had this up front when we were debating that issue so that we could have discussed it and debated it and vetted it at that time rather than having it kind of thrust down our throat that's all I have to say thank you Alderman Alderman Gutenkopf, do you have a question too or oh, good? Okay. All right. Uh, so I have a motion and a second to refer this. We can do this by voice vote. All in favor for referral to this for committee. All in favor by uh, saying aye, please. Aye. aye. Anybody opposed? All right. That is unanimously referred. 
Item number H, I uh, ask Clerk Spencer to read the report, please. It is therefore the recommendation of the Public Affairs and Safety Committee that the City Council approve the purchase of one 2010 Toyota Sienna LE from Elmhurst Toyota, Elmhurst, Illinois, to replace PD-25. It is also the recommendation of the Public Affairs and Safety Committee that the City Council authorize the disposal of old PD-25 and PD-33 by trading these vehicles as part of the purchase. The total cost for one 2010 to Toyota Sienna LE less the trade-in is $15,866.38. Respectfully submitted, Patrick Wagner Chairman, signed by Patrick Wagner Chairman, uh, Chris Nivo Vice Chairman, and Paula Pesa. All righty, and at this time I ask for a motion and a second to put this on the floor, please. Alderman Brown with the motion, Alderman uh, Nivo with a second, and discussion. Uh, yes, this is a, I don't know, a, uh, a very easy question. With all the recall situations that we've had with uh, uh, Toyota, I just wanted to make sure that this has already been vet either by committee and or by city staff that we don't have a concern of this particular make uh, being part of that category. All righty, I, um, I'll defer that to city staff, but however, um, the uh, actually I, I just purchased a Toyota today myself. Uh, the only cars that are affected by that recall are the Corolla and the Camry and uh, so the Sienna, which is what was being purchased by the city, is not, not affected. I, we actually own a Sienna too. So, but uh, Mayor just acted upon his uh, mayoral request and bought a car today, bought a Prius. So uh, we're good. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion, Alderman Wagner? Hope you make fun of my Prius. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to confirm as the chairman of that of that committee that we did vet that, and it was absolutely. Uh, not on the list. There are a couple more cars, I think, than that, but but uh, the Sienna was not part of it, and I think it's going to be a great car. And I would like to make an, uh, a point that there isn't any of the budget funds or any of the uh, taxpayer dollars going for that. That money's been already allocated by some of the great things that the police department does and some of the auction items that come back, and we're able to recover some of the funds that way. So it's a, it's a great way for the police to stay um, incognito at the same time effective for the city of Elmhurst. Thank you. It just seemed to be an ever-changing list, so I just wanted to make sure that we we're on top of things. Good to hear. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well done, Alderman. And uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask uh, Clerk Spencer to call the roll, please. Bram. Aye. Nybo. Aye. Gudenkoff. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Healy. Aye. Morley. Aye. Kennedy, absent. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, uh, 1 absent. That, um, that report carries. And item, and to item uh, number Y, it's a uh, resolution. Ask Clerk Spencer to read the resolution, please. A resolution authorizing the execution of a contract extension between Metro Paramedic Services, Inc., and the City of Elmhurst, Illinois. And at this time, I ask for a motion and a second to put this uh, item on the, on the floor, please. First and a second, Alderman Peza, Alderman Morley, and discussion. Diane, Alderman Gutenkopf, I apologize. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I brought this up because I think it's important for us to publicly recognize that Alderman Peza um, had some really innovative ideas that have saved the city a lot of money with this new contract. And she worked very extensively with um, Chief uh, Cop to um, get competitive bids on uh, the new contract with the ambulance service that um, Metro um, services matched that competitive bid and brought us down to about $200,000 less a year than we've been paying in our previous contracts. Uh, we also are realizing an additional $40,000 savings on our current year contract. Um, there's a provision in this contract that's new as well. Um, we currently lease our ambulances. The city of Elmhurst does not own an ambulance. But at the ap end of this particular contract, we, for the very first time, have the option to purchase the two ambulances that we're leasing for the very reasonable price of a dollar each 
or Metro will give us a credit against um, our return. That, and so I, I'm very excited that this new contract saves the city an awful lot of money in this tough financial time. And I want to just recognize the committee and Alderman Peza for the hard work that they did renegotiating these um, terms. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Great job, Alderman Peza. I also want to recognize the chair and the vice chair, Alderman Wagner and uh, Alderman Naibo, um, who have done a fantastic job. And also our, our, uh, our chief cop, who's, uh, who's in there negotiating, making sure we get the, get the right deal on everything. And, and at the same time, the service level is, is not sacrificed, because I actually think we actually ex negotiated for experienced folks, even are going with, with more of the, the higher level of, of numbered years and all that kind of good stuff. So I, I know you guys really worked hard on that. So kudos to all in the committee, chief, and also to Metro for working hard for us as well, too. All right, at this time, uh, any other discussion? All right. Uh, Clerk Spencer, please call the roll. Hesse. Aye. Morley. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Bram. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kennedy. Absent. Moliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 39 nays, one absent, that uh, resolution does carry. Um, and we go on to item number nine, uh, which is committee reports. Um, item 9A, uh, I'd ask Clerk Spencer to read that report, please. It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council direct the City Attorney to prepare an ordinance adopting the amendments to the City of Elmhurst MCO Chapter 2 as detailed on the attached draft ordinance and adopting the new section regarding a rotation of roll call at City Council meetings. All right. And at this time, I ask for a motion and a second. Wait, I oh, I'm to, sorry. I finished, Mayor. Thank sorry. you. Uh, the report uh, was respectfully submitted and signed by Stephen W. Hipskin, Chairman. Kevin L. York, Vice Chairman, Mark A. Moliner, and Diane Gutenkopf. Thanks, Clerk Spencer. Um, and it's for a motion and a second to put this item on the floor, please. Alderman Hipskin, Alderman York, and discussion. Alderman uh, Gutenkopf. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to um, move that this uh, item be sent back to committee to include um, the uh, uh, referral that we've just discussed about um, changing the order of uh, our agenda. I second that. Alrighty. Uh, you second it. So you're, you're making a motion to refer this back to? Uh, back to committee. We're, um, send it back to Send committee. it back to committee. Just well, to defer this. To, to committee. You're really amending it. Amending the motion uh, was to direct us to prepare it, but now amending just to refer it back. Are you amending it? Yeah. Okay. Quick question. Two members of the same committee, how does that work? Doesn't that just get pulled back automatically? Just to pull back automatically? We have to vote? No, I don't. Um, under your current rules, I think two aldermen can We can pull it back. We can pull it back, pull it back automatically. Okay. Yeah. So no need to vote. No need to move any further. It'll okay. Be back in committee. Okay. Very good. That report will go back to committee. Uh, item, uh, to, uh, onto item 9B. Uh, another report, I ask Clerk Spencer to read that report as well, please. It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council approve the property tax rebate program policy as outlined above. The Finance Committee also recommends that the City Council direct the city attorney to prepare the or the appropriate ordinance signed uh, respectfully submitted um, signed by Stephen W. Hipskin chairman Kevin L. York vice chairman Mark Milliner and Diane Gutenkopf. Alrighty at this time I ask for a motion and a second to put this item on the floor. Alderman Hipskin, Alderman Rose and uh, discussion. Alderman Rose? Yes. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the committee for the hard work that they did on this. I sat in on several of these committee meetings. There were a lot of questions. They were good questions. I think everyone thought, 
on the surface, this is a nice idea, but always the practicality of a nice idea. The devil is in the details, as they say. Um, and I think that good questions were asked. They were asked in the proper spirit. Um, I think that these, this committee uh, really acted as, uh, I think, guardians of uh, both um, the city finances as their charge, as well as with a real understanding of that there's a lot of folks who are hurting in this community and understand how this could be put into play. Saying all that, I could not be more pleased and happier uh, to see this piece of legislation, this report actually come to the city council. Um, during one of the committee meetings that I was invited to attend, um, I heard that actually uh, were we to pass this report uh, and the enabling legislation, we would be the first community in DuPage County that actually um, has proposed and passed a form of property tax rebate uh, for the poorest of the folks in this community. And I think we should be very, very proud of that. Um, this economic, people have talked about economic uh, downturn. I think it's hit a number of people hard, people who didn't expect to be hit hard. Uh, there are many uh, anecdotes we could give to support that of people who've been long-standing members of this community, worked hard their whole life, uh, and now they're in a tight bind. And this is, I think, the least that we can do um, uh, ourselves as uh, members of this city council to say we understand that and there is something we can do. The second thing I'd like to say, this is while it's uh, innovative in DuPage County, for Elmhurst we actually have two other forms of rebate and this is analogous to what we've done here, primarily with uh, seniors um, and with other folks with the utility tax. So uh, the guidelines, this really mimics what's done with that. I think this committee thought long and hard about, it's real easy also to say, oh sure, we'll give you back some money and then we don't have the money to do what we need to do. And I think they thought long and hard about what those issues are, but really saw a way to move forward um, and give property tax relief uh, to individuals in our community. And I am, I am just as proud as can be and I would urge everybody uh, to consider supporting this. This, this, is, this is a big deal. Thank you, Alderman. Well done. Uh, Alderman Hipskin. Well, Alderman Rose, on behalf of our committee, I'd like to thank you for your kind words. Um, but let me remind everyone that uh, ideas come from, uh, you know, they go into committees, but it came from Alderman Rose during our uh, tax levy increase that uh, uh, at that point that we looked at some sort of legislation. We worked through it. Um, we, we did it pretty methodically and uh, with your help. So thank you for bringing it up. Um, it, it, it is, um, it's new in, in, in Elmhurst, it's new in the county, um, and it's something we're proud of. Uh, and it's pretty consistent with how Elmhurst operates. So thank you for bringing up the good idea, and I'm, I'm glad our committee had the ability to act on it, and uh, I'd urge everyone to support it too. Well done, Alderman and committee. Alderman Nybo, and I'll go to Alderman Brown. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this really is a very impressive program and report that's been put together. And so I just want to extend my compliments to both Alderman Rose and to the committee uh, and, and staff who worked on this and anybody else who did. Um, this is probably one of the most impressive things I've seen done at the City Council uh, since I've been on here. Um, and so I look forward to supporting this. And then with your indulgence, Mr. Mayor, uh, shortly after I vote on this, I'm going to excuse myself from the meeting because, believe it or not, I actually have some other things to do tonight. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Brown. Thank you. Um, in regards uh, to the report and the idea, I think it was an innovative idea, or is, sorry, an innovative idea. Um, I actually did have uh, a time uh, with this. Uh, the reason is, uh, we're adding a new program in tough times, which means adding another expense, which is difficult to do in these times. But obviously due to the nature of the program, helping those in need, it's obviously a worthwhile thing to do and move forward. I just had a couple of questions in regards to the implementation of the program itself. Um, one of which it mentions the uh, city will budget $10,000 in the fiscal year of 10-11 uh, for this program. It, it, to me, I didn't take away if this actually is the limit. If we get more applicants and it goes above that budget line item, 
um, which obviously we never want to go above a budget line item, but if, if we do uh, get additional applicants for this, is there some way to qualify or disqualify any of those applicants? Do they just get held over and made first precedence for the following year? How is that handled? Uh, I will defer it to our Chairman of Finance, Alderman Hipskin. Uh, great question. Um, the $10,000, which is budgeted, uh, is budgeted to that amount, and if more is needed, uh, the uh, finance uh, will come to us and ask us for more money. I'm very confident that we've over-budgeted $10,000. We, when I look at the uh, other rebates that mirror this, uh, I think we're probably going to be in the area of certainly less than 50 percent. Uh, I would even go probably 35 percent. So we've over budgeted. I, I really do not think that uh, uh, that we're going to have a request from finance. Although if we do have, uh, or if it does come to that level, we'll certainly have the ability to look at it beforehand. And actually, that will come uh, to the city council as a line item. Uh, Number one, number two, it, there is a sunset clause in here, so it's it's a one-year thing, which we can renew uh, very easily just with a, a vote, um, and uh, we'll look at that uh, on an annual basis. Is that does that answer everything? It does, but I have one more question, if okay. I may, Mr. Mayor. Absolutely, Alderman. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, the other the other question I had in regards to being able to tell, it's it's stated about uh, the household's income. Uh, for instance, if there's multiple individuals living in the household um, that do not file together, do not file as one, how would you be able to determine if they actually do qualify? Is it expected a, talking about uh, religion here tonight, um, just a, an honesty um, where all three of them would actually come in and say, this is what w my annual household does bring in, or is there some type of methodology to determine that? Um, you know, I really don't think we've gone in depth that far to look at it. Um, when you break down the house, when you break down the house, the owner will have to be the owner of the house. So that's the main person. Mm -hmm. The uh, assessed value will also have probably some sort of correlation to the rebate. Um, so there will be some some effects. If someone really wants to get sneak through the system, I think uh, I think they can. Uh, but when we look at it, uh, they would be sneaking probably less than $150. So I, I really I I, I have uh, this is on on good faith and. Uh, if it was larger amounts of money, yeah, I, I think we'd probably have more um, checks and balances. But I, I think that uh, as these are put together, it, it will it will self-govern itself. Before I go to uh, Alderman Gutenkopf, I saw City Manager Porcher with a hand up. I'm sure he may have an answer for this as well. So, City Manager, yeah, just to, <clears throat> to supplement the the chair's response, the city does have a form. The applicant would need to fill out that form. That form would ask for household income, total household income, and accurate information to document that household income. Typically, income tax, federal income tax, state income tax forms suffice for that. But there would need to be a full disclosure of the applicant. We can't, oh, we, we, you know, the applicant needs to be forthright. The city will deal with what is provided on those forms as it makes its determination of, of any rebate request. So there'll be evidence of, uh, of what is requested. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's actually, um, you know, Alderman uh, York pointed out to me there's also a clause in here that uh, this will include proof of income for all members of the household. So. Very good. Got it covered. Um, Gutenkopf, did I answer your, your uh, discussion, or were you uh, going to answer? I just, uh, uh, the City Manager Borchardt pretty much addressed it. I just want to remind the council that we already have in place um, programs that serve this population. We have um, established procedures for verifying eligibility for those programs, and I have no reason to believe that this would be any different. So I, I think that we are very fiscally responsible when it comes to addressing need and providing service, and, and I just want to remind everyone of that. 
Very good. Very good. Alderman Pezza. Well, thank you, Mayor. Just a quick something I noticed for Mr. Storino, most likely when the actual ordinance is crafted. Um, it says the property tax rebate program will be limited to owner-occupied single-family and multi-family dwellings. I, I'm wondering if we need to clarify or if it even matters because the dollar figure will take care of it. When it says multi-family dwellings, does that mean someone that owned an apartment building that lived in the apartment building would be able to qualify? Sometimes I, there's a... I'll defer that to the city attorney, but uh, I also probably... Uh, I think they would apply to condominiums that, that people own um, as well, but, uh, but that's other question is a, is a good question. Um, Owner-occupied rental units, would that, uh, would that? I don't, uh, I don't think it was intended, to be honest, I don't think it's intended for that, so I guess, and I'll talk to the chair about that, but uh, I would craft it in a way that it would only apply to okay. single owner condominiums or uh, individual homes. Thank you. So home ownership, no rentals, basically. We'll make sure it's clarified. And more than likely that uh, rental income would offset to a point. Okay. So there are a lot of checks and balances that just naturally occur. So, and I, I didn't think of that. I just thought of it as you brought it up. I was like, wait, the, you know, you're right. Uh, that I'm could, uh, but the owner of the rental will have to have that as household. That's rental will be income. So that would probably negate the different levels. Yeah, for those renting apartments, you don't have to worry about this. This, uh, this is strictly a property tax on people who own property. So we'll clarify that right away too. So, um, okay. Any other discussion? If not, I ask uh, Clerk Spencer to uh, call the roll, please. Hipskin. Aye. Rose. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. <laughs> York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Morley. Aye. Kennedy. Absent. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. That report does carry. Uh, does pass. And Point of order. <laughs> I think we may have missed somebody on that roll call. I think we did. <laughs> oh. It's not adding up right. I think. Let's you missed see. me. So 12. <laughs> Ram. Oh, Aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> okay. Alderman Bram. Aye. Aye. All right. Now we have 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. Okay. Thank I you. I apologize. <laughs> we never want to leave you out, Alderman Been Bram. heavily sedated for a while. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Eddie, you got to pass as long as you want. No problem. Let's keep on smiling Coming up there. Coming out of my coma. <laughs> All right. I, I, I want to thank the council for getting this report done. Thank the uh, finance committee, Susan Rose, Alderman Rose, for coming up with a great idea on this and for committee members to making sure that we have options for families that uh, are in tough financial positions so we can, we can give them a rebate on, on this increase. So thank you all uh, for, for helping the committee, Susan. Kudos to, to all involved and for the council for getting this approved. Uh, Next on the agenda, item uh, 10, reports and recommendations of appointed elected officials. Um, item number A is myself. Uh, I want to mention a couple things. I kind of talked about one issue bef right before public forum, or excuse me, right, right before the consent agenda, and uh, that prayer issue will go to committee. I am open to that. We'll put it through the process, cross the T's, dot our I's, and have discussion. And, and uh, again, no other towns have legislated. So I, I personally didn't want to be offensive by that, uh, by put, putting this on the agenda. But, but, but if this is what the council would like to do, it's, uh, we'll, we'll put it through the process. So uh, we'll be the first town to, to legislate if, if that were to be the case. Um, also, no other towns do this in, yeah, in closed session. They all, they all, if they pray, they pay, pray publicly. So um, just, just food for thought. Um, want to mention about the um, Relay for Life, which is actually uh, going to be moving their event uh, from York High School to, um, to Barron's Park. And uh, kudos to Rich Gratzky and, and the Park Board for working that out with Relay. He makes you the honorary chair for that event. They're doing a kickoff this Thursday at 6 p.m. at Fitz's Lane. So people that are involved with Relay, I know we've got a lot of folks affected by 
by cancer in this community. It's a big, big community of, of uh, people that support this. Please uh, make sure that uh, if they'd like to go to the kickoff, that is this Thursday at, uh, at uh, Fitz's Lanes. Also, I uh, want to remind everybody that, um, that tomorrow was Election Day, and uh, it's important for everyone to come out and vote, and I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, But, you know, we can complain all we want about government, but if we don't go out and vote <coughs> and we don't cast our, our votes for people we feel strongly about, we got nothing to complain about. So I encourage everyone. Uh, it's so important that we vote. Um, you know, they're, they're expecting a 20 to 25 percent turnout tomorrow, which is terrible. So we should have 100 percent turnout. You know, um, so please exercise your right to vote. Vote for your favorite candidate, but but please get out there. So um, with that, I'll open up the um, uh, reports and recommendations. To uh, we've got a, a report. For, uh, item B. Uh, any other elected officials like to give a report at all? Anybody? Alderman York? Um, yeah. I just wanted to um, thank you, Your Honor. Sure. I just wanted to mention that uh, at last Monday's committee meeting, we received the uh, comprehensive annual financial report. And um, I think this is, this is a huge document, as you can see here um, uh, on TV and whatnot. But this document is available in a PDF. You can download it from the website. Um, I think uh, given all the scrutiny that's been um, afforded our finances and, and the um, uh, concerns that we all have as residents of the community, that it would uh, pay for everybody to take a look at. It's not a lot of fun reading, but there's a lot of great information in here that um, supports um, in spades many of the things that Elmhurst does very, very well and um, kind of reiter reiterates the concerns that we all have about the community with regard to finances. So. It's a great document to take a look at. Um, there's some summary pages at the beginning of the chapters and whatnot, but I'd hi highly recommend reading. So, Very good. And I'd like to thank the city staff, Marilyn Gasson and her staff, um, Peg and accounting. All these people do a fantastic job of making sure, too, that the city incurs a very low audit fee by being prepared for this um, adventure on an annual basis. And having been an auditor at one point in my life, um, it's certainly good to walk into a situation where people are prepared. You still attack it with the same level of scrutiny and open-mindedness, but you don't have to um, spend all the time digging for all the details and you know scouring all the corners of the floor and everything. So, anyway, award-winning, award-winning report. I was yes. just going to add that we've won awards for our, our financial audits, and uh, as Alderman York referred to, we've got great staff that works with the outside auditor, uh, but we have a system of checks and balances to make sure that all those. All those pennies are accounted for, and the pennies add up to a lot of money. So, uh, about 51 million in operating. So, uh, so kudos to to uh, staff, to our, our, our uh, fine finance group to monitor this and, and use these numbers to make make well thought, well, 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 well spoken decisions that we need to make here in the next year. Mayor, um, Mayor, Alderman Brown. Mayor. Thank you. Um, and I. I uh, just decided to actually speak, and I wasn't going to, not to bring up the same topic, um, but I, I did want to bring up uh, my uh, the, the rationale behind my absence of not being here at the start of the the council meeting tonight, and that was due to uh, my strong feeling that I uh, that I thought that the uh, issue of the invocation should be debated uh, before it is ever seen on an agenda item. It's not whether my my stance is not whether it should or should not happen at this point. That will be debated. Um, but I, I felt that since there was a referral um, that is on tonight's agenda, uh, and it does, as Alderman Molliner stated earlier in the evening, make uh, clearly sp state what the consent or what the overall agenda should look like. Uh, my feeling was that it was actually a violation of that ordinance to have that on there. I have not consulted with the city attorney. This is just my my feeling on that issue. So since my attendance record, and I'm very dedicated to this role, I've only missed one committee, or one council meeting in, in my terms here. I wanted to explain to the residents of the third ward of the reason why I was not here during roll call. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Any other discussion or reports from anybody? Okay, very good. Uh, item, no, item number B, uh, report from uh, uh, give this to our city manager, DuPage, DuPage uh, Salt Creek work group update. City Thank manager you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Two, two quick reports before Mr. Uh, 
strikers introduced uh, would wish to uh, point out there's a information in the packet uh, the stormwater management planning committee from district one <laughs> has elected mayor Deciani as the representative of the district to the stormwater committee of DuPage County going forward you may recall mayor Marcucci of Elmhurst was uh, the district one rep prior and Elmhurst is pleased uh, I'm pleased as the manager of Elmhurst to be working with Elmhurst mayor going forward with all of the other mayors from district one this is an important committee for Elmhurst uh, as Elmhurst is maybe more significantly affected by Salt Creek than than really any other community in DuPage County that's an information item secondly pace has announced that they will be shutting down their route 643 and 645 which serves Northwest Elmhurst and the Elmhurst Industrial Park to the Metra station Elmhurst did by correspondence request that that be reconsidered I believe there was a reconsideration but did not make the cut requirements and pace has announced they will be discontinuing that service uh, more thorough report now from mr. Stryker who is uh, uh, one of the original members of the DuPage River Salt Creek work group he's been on the executive board for the last five years uh, first two of those five years as vice president and the last three years as president of the Salt Creek work group representing Elmhurst on this group and we have a short report for the community council in particular as to the importance of this work effort and the opportunities that it brings to the Elmhurst community. Mr. Stryker. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor DeCiani, members of the City Council and City Manager for allowing me to update you all on this. Um, as the City Manager said, uh, Elmhurst is a founding member of this group and it's something that I think is, uh, as I go into my presentation, I hope you'll, you'll find that you'll, you, you've been a uh, innovative and, and progressive community in this and in, in your environmental stewardship. Um, the work group is pretty unique in Illinois and has been recognized as so. Um, maybe just a little history here just for a moment. In 2004, Illinois EPA did a uh, water quality analysis on a number of rivers in Illinois and at that year they chose to do all three rivers in DuPage County. Um, this is something the states are obligated to do as a part of the Clean Water Act to report to US EPA on the status of the surface waters and how well they're attaining the goals of the Clean Water Act and to identify any remaining stressors in the rivers that need to be addressed. Um, myself and other managers in the county were very focused on this report because we understood it is likely to target point dischargers. Those are wastewater plant dischargers. Um, we knew at the time, I know that wastewater plants have a bad rap in terms of <laughs> being sources of pollution and maybe that was true 30 years ago or more but um, today wastewater plants truly are sources of clean water in the rivers and uh, and there's other many other stressors that need to be addressed but the Clean Water Act is limited in what it's focused it can only look at point dischargers um, after the after the TMDL TMDL by the way stands for total maximum daily loading it's the amount of pollutants that a, a stream can assimilate and not get polluted um, after the TMDL was, was uh, published, we asked a uh, local engineering firm to review the potential costs within the Salt Creek Basin. And you see it's 16 to 48 million dollars. It's quite a spread there. Um, understanding that, you know, he, he, we didn't go into a detailed analysis, but he knew that in DuPage County, a highly urban, urbanized area, our Salt Creek watershed is a highly urbanized watershed, um, many of the wastewater plants are landlocked. And in order to add process to their, to their uh, facilities, they likely would have to purchase land or worse yet, you know, put in a satellite plant, which those costs can be extraordinary. So that was factored in. The work group was formed in, in 2005. We gained a not-for-profit status and a tax-exempt status right away to protect the agencies who we represent and to, um, to keep, the, keep the whole thing more simple, I think. Um, to date, we've, we've gotten over a million dollars in grants that we've been able to uh, parlay from our dues, which, we, which is almost $300,000 a year from the agency members and other associate members. 
Um, we use a watershed approach in this, and that is really what I want to get into is the unique part of the, of the work group. Here are the members. Um, the, the logo, by the way, in the middle is DuPage County, obviously, the outline overlying the watershed of the three rivers. So you can see that we go out of DuPage County on the north and the south and on the east. It's actually a three-county organization. Um, Cook County plays a major role in this with the Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. They're a major player in our group, along with all of the communities within DuPage County and a number of associate members, including the um, citizen advocacy groups, which we've specifically reached out for, Sierra Club, Prairie Rivers Network, uh, Salt Creek Watershed Network, and so on. Uh, we want those folks on the board. We want their, their input. We want them to be active members, um, and, and we want them to participate. The funding structure for the, for the work group is based upon two things. Um, the uh, size of the wastewater plants that the communities may operate, as well as the acreage of the community. And the acreage is important because stormwater is such a huge factor in this. So the size of the community equals the amount of stormwater that they may discharge to their local rivers. Um, the wastewater plants obviously have a flow that we can calculate. The associate members are members uh, with a lesser due structure but are also uh, pay their way. And of course the grants programs uh, cover much of the, uh, the project costs. Um, within the funding structure is also kind of a voting structure. Agency member votes are weighted higher than uh, citizen advocacy groups. So the agency members are, are funding the total of this and really the, carrying the heavy load. So a vote from an agency member is worth three times the vote of a citizen advocacy group. So we can't be, um, what, overrun or maybe controlled by folks who aren't really paying the bills. Um, likewise, the executive board can, the, the officers can only be agency representatives. We have citizen advocacy members on the board as, as uh, members at large or maybe committee chairs or such, but only the executive board uh, officers can be agency members. Um, this is an old slide, but it kind of gives you a little bit of a flavor of how the dues are broken up in cost per acre and then cost per, uh, per gallon for the wastewater treatment facilities. When the TMDLs were published, we focused primarily on those uh, details that the, that the TMDL pulled out as impairments within the stream. Um, that was dissolved oxygen, it was chloride, it was various chemical contaminants within the rivers um, and, uh, and habitat. Um, over the past four or five years, we've been focusing on developing an extremely detailed database of, uh, of the rivers to establish a good baseline condition. Um, I would say at this point, and it's not too far out to go, that, that Salt Creek is one of the highest studied rivers in all of Illinois at this point. We have extraordinary amount of data on this, and uh, it's all been, um, we have a quality assurance program that goes through it, so it's all, it's all vetted and, uh, and is something used by EPA now for their, for their future analysis. Um, when we put this together, we insisted that EPA help us with a, using this as a watershed approach. Again, we're not focusing on individual agencies or individual dischargers. We're looking at this as a watershed problem that needs to be addressed in a watershed manner. The goal of that is to hopefully uh, leverage the dollars that all of the agencies uh, spend into projects that would help everyone. I think part of the program, part of the project or part of the problem with, with uh, stream re rehabilitation is, is that why should I fix my part if the person up or downstream isn't fixing their part? So, um, so getting everybody into the same program, I think, was the strength. Illinois EPA and US EPA have um, identified this as a, as a work group model. And in fact, in, in uh, one of their publications, US EPA specifically references the DuPage River Salt Creek work group as a uh, model for other watershed groups um, in the in, in, uh, United States. Maybe just a few minutes on individual things that we've done. Um, the dissolved oxygen monitoring, Salt Creek has eight or nine probes. Um, the, the green dots are, the, are our probes from the work group. The red dots are 
the Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. They also have do deal monitoring on the uh, river. And you can see where they're located along the river there. Um, just a quick graphic on what it shows. And um, it shows that while, while Salt Creek has some very good reaches that are in pretty good shape, we also have some serious problems within the basin. Um, the dark line there is, an, is a seven-day running average of dissolved oxygen. The red dotted line is the, is the minima that were measured. And as you can see, there are some physical structures on the river that are still causing significant problems, um, most notably the uh, Graw Mill Dam at Fullersburg. We did complete biological assessments and habitat assessments because while we did com chemicals, chemical analysis are really a snapshot of what is happening in the river. Um, you get a chemical sample and it, and it could change the very next day. Uh, water quality in the river could change the very next day. Whereas the, the biological indexes are really long-term indicators. What is there is there that is there that can sustain whatever's in the river. And um, what we're finding in Salt Creek is, is that, again, we've got some serious problems. The bioassessment plan that was done for Salt Creek is, again, one of the most detailed within the state. It's a geometric design moving up the river and up the tributaries to those sensitive areas up the tribs. The results of some of the measurements that we did show pretty well that, um, that Salt Creek is still in that restricted zone of uh, biological diversity. But there are, again, some reaches that are getting better. Notable is downstream of the Graw Mill Dam. Um, you recall from that other graphic that the, uh, that the DO was very low upstream of the dam, but downstream of the dam, the river has clear access all the way to the Des Plaines River, so migration of fish species up the river is not hindered. They don't run into a physical structure. When they get to the dam, they stop and can't go any further. So uh, that stops that kind of receding of the river, if you imagine. Another important goal of the work group was to um, try and gender some alternative thinking on, on other pollutants within the basin. Chloride was identified as a pollutant within the rivers in all three rivers, and you can imagine in a highly urbanized area, application of salt in the wintertime is, uh, is incredible. Um, so what we did was we started a uh, fact-finding mission, first of all, to try and determine how much salt actually is applied within the county, and then hired a consultant to look at the way s chlorides are used across the country and how we can maybe um, mitigate the use of salt or enhance the use of alternatives. And this is one method here of pre-wetting a street with a calcium chloride. It still is a chloride uh, component, but, um, but by pre-wetting the pavement before a snowfall, um, that pre-wetted pavement can really cut down on the amount of sodium use. You may see these being used by the county now in various areas. If you go to a stop sign and you notice lines on the pavement, wet lines, it's probably because they pre-treated with the calcium chloride. We have a number of regulations that we're looking at and going to likely be uh, faced with in the next few years. You know, participation in the work group is, I think, in the watershed approach, will be very helpful for all of the wastewater plants in reestablishing habitat and, 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 and cleaning up the stormwater. Wastewater plants will always be faced with some specific pollutants that, um, that may be a problem. Um, these are some that are on the drawing boards or kind of in the study mill, if you will, um, and likely will be seen in the next few years. Phosphorus in particular is probably coming along for sure. The work group efforts continue beyond the technical to maybe a more administrative and try to, trying to convince EPA that maybe some of their approaches need to be modified. The TMDL focusing on single pollutants like that manganese or the phosphorus may be hiding bigger problems. And what we'd like to see them do is, um, is maybe open up a little bit and, and allow the TMDL to be more habitat related. Um, our, our experience across the state is, is that many times the habitat, once restored, rivers are, are very regenerative and very assimilative. They can take a lot of things and, and take it 
well if the habitat is there. Um, obviously, in our urbanized, modified streams, that habitat is totally gone. So if we can do something to reestablish that, um, it would be helpful. Um, we'd also like to approach the state. Elmhurst pays $34,000 a year in NPDES fees to Illinois EPA. Only half of that actually goes to the EPA. The other half goes someplace. We don't know, into the general <laughs> fund. What we'd like to find out is where it's going and maybe get it back for water quality work within the state. Actually, we met with the governor's staff a few weeks ago on that very topic. Um, and then lastly, to leverage our work group membership into, um, into reducing our obligation for stream sampling. Elmhurst has a specific requirement for stream sampling that, uh, that the work group is really covering. Um, that would help save us some dollars and, um, and maybe encourage more membership within the work group. Um, it's a very brief overview. Um, I really encourage you, if you really enjoy reading technical stuff, as Alderman York said, you want that sort of, <laughs> that sort of exciting reading, get to our website. Um, it's, it's loaded with data on what's going on within the rivers. The biological assessments in particular I find real exciting. But, um, but it's, it's a great website to use as a uh, resource. So I'd like to thank you very much, actually, in a closing statement here, for allowing me to be on that board. It's been a very exciting thing for the past five years. Um, my term as president will be ending here in the next few weeks. Uh, we have our annual meeting in February, and uh, we'll be uh, uh, moving the membership uh, leadership on to some other folks. So uh, being part of that for the last five years has just been incredible. So thank you. Thank you, Dennis. And for those who don't know, Mr. Stryker is the superintendent uh, of the Elmhurst Wastewater Treatment Plant. There's two really major significant factors on Elmhurst participation, not only for the quality of Salt Creek as a stream. Elmhurst does enjoy a wonderful exposure on Salt Creek and its natural habitat. We want that to be as quality as possible. Then secondly, as Elmhurst operates its own wastewater treatment plant, Elmhurst, Elmhurst citizens um, pay a utility uh, fee on their sewer bill and their water bill, and what the Salt Creek Group is doing is allowing wastewater treatment plants to be more effective and efficient in the manner in which they're expected by EPA to operate, which I think keeps generally the costs appropriately where they belong on water and wastewater treatment plants, and Elmhurst is Pleased to be in a in a leadership position. Thanks to Mr. Stryker's assistance. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Stryker? Alderman Morley. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stryker, for the update. Uh, you mentioned biological assessment uh, more than once, and I think you even referred it might be a passion of yours. Um, I'm curious where the DuPage River Salt Creek Water Group is on the uh, the Growl Mill Dam. It seems that that affects the uh, salt free uh, to a great deal. And uh, can you just give us both sides? What do the proponents and opponents say about removing the dam or modifying the dam, and what's the status? When we finished our dissolved oxygen assessment, um, as part of the grant funding, we did reach out for public meetings and, and do the presentation. Part of our due diligence was to look at what might be done in that Grand Mill Reservoir where the oxygen sags occur and the fish kills occur. Um, there are options. One of the options is to artificially aerate it. Um, another option is to um, remove the dam or to modify the dam and, and lower the water level within the, within the reservoir. Um, when we mentioned that uh, removal or modifying the dam, I think we got a lot of support from some folks upriver but downstream, especially those folks who are, uh, who are, who are uh, interested in the historical nature of the Grand Mill um, were pretty much opposed to the whole thing. Uh, and it ended up, we, we gave a presentation to the village of Oak Brook, and um, unfortunately we didn't convince them. Th they, they voted to not support the report, which I'm not, it didn't do anything because of the, you know, the technical nature of, this, of the report was there, the data are the data. Um, our goal was not to remove the dam, only to identify what would be best to mitigate the dissolved oxygen problem within the, um, within the, the reservoir. Um, I think that there are some great opportunities here to find a win-win 
with <coughs> the folks there. Maybe um, one of the offers was to rebuild a, a similar dam to what was there originally in the 1840s, a wooden structure that, that, that imitates the original construction design but doesn't really dam up the water and used the whole thing as an educational opportunity for folks who are visiting the Grand Mill. Um, as I said, we're still talking, but nothing has been done yet. My concern, however, is, is that, you know, somewhere along the line, the wastewater plants will be obligated to respond to water quality problems in Salt Creek unless we can convince EPA that they aren't the wastewater plants, it's that, those, those physical structures. So, I don't know if that answered your question, hopefully. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Healy. Who actually controls the dam? The Forest Preserve. The Forest Preserve so District. If the decision ever was to be made to remove the dam, modify the dam, rebuild the dam, it's the Forest Preserve. It's the Forest Preserve. And we've presented this information to the Forest Preserve as well. They are members of the work group. Um, and I, maybe I should point out all of the agencies that are there, the Water Reclamation District, DuPage County, uh, the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County, um, various townships and others are all on the board. So I think the Forest Preserve District is in a tough spot, and um, you know I think I think they've they've got to make the decision when the time comes. Thank you. I have a question too, Mr. Stryker. First of all, you've done a tremendous amount of service, Delmarst, over the years, and I congratulate you for all your hard work. Um, uh, you know wastewater better than anybody. Uh, with this dam issue, uh, if, if we're able to alleviate this, will it not only affect <laughs> wastewater but also stormwater? Will it give us a, a little better of a situation right. with this new our, our experience, and everything? Our, I'm sorry. Our experience is that, again, the wastewater plants are not the cause of problems in the river. It's the stormwater. Right. As you know, Salt Creek is a very flashy stream. It changes dramatically with, the amount of, with even small amounts of rain. It flushes in a lot of um, material, a lot of organic material that gets into the streams at the end of a storm event. That is really the problem in the river. And uh, I say this only half jokingly, it takes a few days for the wastewater effluent to clean it up again. Um, the, the dams, and there's more than one, there's several dams on, on the river that are a problem, um, but the dams are an issue from a biological perspective. They are an obstruction to fish migration. And you know, some people can say, well, you just maybe you know, seed the fish back in there, just put some fish back into the river. But there's maybe 30 or 40 varieties of, of fish that we'd be looking for, and, and they're, not, they're not your commercial or, <coughs> or sports fishing type fish. These are the smaller you know, feeder fish, if you will. Um, so it, the best thing is to restore the habitat, and removing foreign or you know, unnatural structures is the way to do it. Very good. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? All righty. Okay, thank you again. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Mayor Marcucci. I know Tem uh, City Manager Borchard mentioned about the uh, appointment of myself to the Stormwater Commission, but, but the mayor, uh, to his credit, previous mayor Marcucci, uh, Tom Marcucci, has served up until this point um, and uh, has been a big help to the city. Uh, we've got almost, I believe, somewhere around 1,100 homes that are deemed to go back in the floodplain that were taken out after the 87 flood, after all the infrastructure was put in place, the Stone Quarry, Louis Reservoir on Lake Street, millions and millions and millions of dollars spent to eradicate Salt Creek flooding. And uh, Mayor Marcucci has been on the Stormwater Committee and, and I am proud to be at the table in the future to make sure that Elmhurst stays out of harm's way and, and we keep the, the homes on the south side of Elmhurst uh, out of that flood map. Uh, and, and likewise also some of the commercial properties as well that are involved with that so and I look forward to working with our county board members to, to make that happen too I appreciate that that is a not only is is it large in the fact of the threat for our homes but also for future economic development of this town because there are a lot of key corners key parcels that uh, we're landlocked, so the only way we could grow is to redevelop in certain areas, and uh, we've got a lot of key parcels that are unfortunately stuck in that flood, the new flood map. So, if uh, if we're able to work together and get through that, uh, we'll have plenty of opportunity for economic development. But uh, it, it's also a hinder on that as well, besides the homes, which naturally are 
are all near and dear to us because nobody wants their, their home in a floodplain, especially after 100 year, 120 year rain and, and no flooding uh, out, outside of Salt. You know, Salt Creek stayed in the creek, so that was huge. So, City Manager Borchard, do you have more to say? Uh, end of report, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Other business? Anybody uh, for other business? Alderman Shea. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I heard from some um, commuters about the new uh, parking payment machines, and um, I was just wondering if you can give us some insight on that. Uh, some have said the lines are really long. One person said they missed their train, and uh, another person said it was having trouble accepting the money. The uh, updated system of taking debit cards, credit cards, or cash currency or coin currency has been put in place. I think there's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, I think the commuters at this point have overcome the learning curve and things are moving through and, and folks I think are not having the problem that they had initially with just understanding how to use the, use the, use the equipment. Uh, there is a, a device at the exit of each of the two parking structures. There's three devices at the train station. There is one at, at, on the platform west of York Street, I'm sorry, east of York Street on the north side of the tracks, and one on the south side of the tracks. So we, we believe that there are enough devices there to, to allow the commuters to, to process through and have now grown accustomed to it. We believe it's a much more effective program for both the commuters and f significantly more effective for the, for the city staff that collects and enforces the payment system. Uh, the first couple of days the system was in effect, city staff was at the boxes along with the contractor that uh, provided the equipment to answer questions, provide guidance and counsel, and to my knowledge, I believe all of those those um, issues of learning how to use the equipment have been worked out. Thank you, Alderman. Any other, uh, Alderman Morley? Yeah, as a follow-up to what Alderman Shea said, um, I actually uh, received a similar phone call about the parking boxes. And uh, when I did contact the city, I found out that city staff and the contractor were there to help. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, and I do believe uh, a lot of it has been alleviated just with familiarity anytime there's new technology. Uh, you're going to have some challenges, but uh, six months down the road, let's say, um, if there's uh, uh, still an issue, um, what's the best way to uh, address that? Do we st do we have some recourse either with Metro or with the contractor, uh, specifically maybe in terms of uh, the boxes aren't operating operating properly or possibly moving locations? I, I think any any problem is more a factor of how many folks are trying to use the equipment in a short period of time. We have planned to add another box at the parking deck under construction, and we continue to monitor. We'll respond if, uh, if there's not enough boxes where there's a demand. We'll evaluate that cost versus versus benefit. Uh, the equipment is working. There's no doubt it's working. But if again there's a there's a rush at the gate, everybody's there and anxious and uh, there's 20 people in line and the train's about to leave, there's some problems. So uh, we're, we're trying, to, trying to gauge that. And I think the commuters are, are, are sorting things out. They, you, can, you can pay at, at, at several of the, of the boxes. So folks are actually redistributing the, the load like you do yourself at the grocery store. You got a long line and a short line. Uh, you may walk a little bit out of your preferred route to get to the shorter, shorter line and make things work. I'm going to go all the way up before I do that. Um, uh, uh, City Manager Borchard, if you park in a parking deck, will the machine that pay, pays for parking deck, can you also pay for street parking, for instance, uh, or uh, in the same location, or are they interchangeable? Because I had, I had one issue, too, with a constituent that was a little concerned as well. Is, um, can, you, can, can they overflow to another one and still? Are they, are they universal throughout? I think the decks are specific. The boxes at the decks are specific for the parking at that deck, but along the railroad tracks, it's universal. Gotcha. All right. Alderman York, please. Uh, and I, <clears throat> I uh, only know this because I toured the public works facility the other day with Mr. Hughes, but there's a machine sitting there that I know was going to go into the deck, but they're now going to redeploy that to 
the platform, I believe it's east of York Street now, to catch some of those folks, because I've heard a lot of the same things too, to catch those folks who are running from the parking down on the east side there. So they're going to redeploy that box there for the time being until the deck is finished, and then they're going to put a new box, a newer unit in, in, the, in the deck. So, um, you know, I, I think they're, they're on top of this. I did stop and talk with the, uh, with the enforcement folks too, and, and um, you know, it's making, like you said too, it's making their job. Um, it's saving the, the taxpayers money because they're having to spend a lot less time counting dollar bills and coins and all these types of things. They simply take the coin box out and put it in. And then I've, you know, I think there's also just a learning curve involved. I had one person who thought they could, who told me they thought they could buy train tickets at that machine. <laughs> and they probably, you know, monkeyed around at the keyboard of the machine trying to figure out how to buy a train ticket there, thus delaying maybe five or ten people behind them. So. I think a lot of it is is familiarity with the uh, with the system, and I'd have to commend city staff for um, listening and making adjustments with the utilization of the equipment. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Anybody else, Alderman Pesci? Just quick to add, if you go to the city website, Elmhurst.org, I noticed today because uh, I had some calls myself. There is an excellent display flyer. If you click on, it's the top line explaining how to use the new machines and everything. It's pretty simplified and it's pretty easy to picture when you're reading it. So hopefully that'd be helpful. Thank you, Alderman Pezza. Anybody else? Alrighty. Alderman Gutenkopf? Do I have an yeah. announcement? Oh, announcement? Oh, now no announcements, Alderman Gutenkopf. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to announce that the February coffee and conversation with the first ward alderman, in this case me, <laughs> will be on uh, February 25th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. It's an evening meeting, and we're gonna drink tea. We're gonna meet at Serene Teas, which is at 108 West Park on February 25th from 6.30 to 8. So if you're a First Ward resident, you'd like to try a new business and meet your alderman, talk about whatever um, is on top of mind, please join me on uh, the 25th. Thank you. Very well done. So I had a Serene for him. She's a good, friend. Good, good person. Got a great little tea shop, too. Uh, any other announcements? Anybody? Okay. If not, I ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman York, second by Alderman Hipskin. Yes, Alderman second. Hipskin. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>